As you probably know, when you look at someone's face, you can tell pretty much immediately if you find them attractive or not. It takes, on average, 3 seconds to find out if you are attracted to someone, and the process of falling in love actually only takes briefly a second. Even though society tells you that beauty is subjective, which is kinda true, to a certain extent there are a bunch of biological factors that are hardwired into us regarding how we judge a person's physical appearance. The eyes play a big part in this, and that is what I will be covering in this video. At first I would like to point out that perceived facial attraction comes down a lot to harmony, how well the features play together, so even if a study says something is considered more attractive and it doesn't correlate to you and your face, you shouldn't let it affect you at all, since faces are very unique and there is no one size fits all, it's all just patterns and generalizations. Okay, so if we look at the science, it says that you ideally want eyes that match the measurements of your face. Well, eyes are not too far apart, not too close set, and if you have a longer face, bigger wider eyes to match. The ideal, according to Solomon's study, for males is 0.46 units distance apart from eye centers, and slightly wider set for females with 0.48 units. And well, what is a unit? One unit is the facial width in alignment with the eyes. So basically, the ideal eyes are in proportion to the face. Well, what a surprise! <clears throat> this distance between the eyes is called interpupillar distance, or IPD. And here you can see why a short and long IPD is not really always optimal. So, the distance between the eyes is a big part of the eye area. But it's even more interesting to look at the actual features building the shape and look. A person's eye area is dictated by a few things. Firstly, we have the skull shape. The frontal bone, and more specifically, the brow ridge plays a big role. And also, the maxillary protrusion and zygomatic bone. Basically, <laughs> this is the bone where your eyebrows are your cheekbones, and the bone situated between your cheekbone and your nose. If you ever heard about mewing, this is the bones that hypothetically could be altered through doing it. And it's probably a lot more likely if it's done since a young age, since mewing causes pressure which hypothetically pushes the maxilla forward, and therefore the cheekbones upwards. How much this is true is up for debate, but I've already covered this on my channel before, so I'll link the video below if you'd like. The other thing dictating your eye area is the soft tissue around the eyes, such as fat beneath the brow bone, which usually tends to decrease by age, making the area seem a bit more saggy and hollow, usually, in older people. What's usually seen in many attractive faces is that these bones have grown in a forward and upwards way. And from a health perspective, forward growth is very easy to understand. The more the face grows forward, the more space is available for the teeth, airway and tongue. And often this is what's aesthetically preferred in humans too, according to several studies. Anyways, now back to the eyes. Forward and upward grown faces usually cause the eyes to be horizontally wide and vertically narrow. This is generally considered attractive, especially in men, and it is somewhat of a dimorphic trait. A British study on facial attractiveness had oval-shaped eyes with, with straight low-set eyebrows rated as the most attractive eyes on men by women. This eye shape usually means that the facial bones are forward-grown and with a strong under eye support. When the under eye is not as forward grown, this usually results in a rounder eye area and can result in a more tired look with more scleral show, which is when the white part of your eyes shows a lot. It's probably more in your favor if you have less scleral show as a man, since many conventionally attractive women do have scleral show. According to Solomon's study, however, the ideal eyes for women is almond eyes, which according to L'Oreal is characterized by that the eyelids touch the iris. 
which basically means that there's minimal scleral show. Anyways, it's definitely not a deal breaker as most people have scleral show to some extent. And especially for women, big round eyes are seen as feminine and youthful. But if we want to believe the study, it might be better if scleral show is at least a bit limited and that it isn't too much. Like I said, for women the ideal eyes are almond shaped according to the study, with eyebrows 0.125 units above the eyes. For men it was a lot less, with 0.07 units. Maybe you've heard the term hooded eyes or hunter eyes. Basically, it's usually considered attractive to have these eyes as a man, when the eyes are vertically narrow and horizontally wide, with eyebrows close to the eyes. This type of eye area rarely shows any or at least a lot of upper eyelid exposure, which is what it sounds like, the visibility of your upper eyelid. Upper eyelid exposure is not optimal since it makes your eyes look more protruding and more buggish, which is not always the best look. However, if you do have upper eyelid exposure, don't feel down about it. There are many people considered very attractive with upper eyelid exposure, such as Peaky Blinders star Cillian Murphy. And this hunter eyes is not a must for being attractive as a man at all, which countless examples show. And many people even argue that slight upper eyelid exposure is ideal. The skull shape that uh, an eye area like this usually comes with, with this kind of strong uh, brow ridge, is also more common in Eurocentric faces, making it highly possible that it's a cultural preference as well. Another more subtle but important factor is the cantal tilt of your eyes. A neutral or slightly positive tilt is ideal for both genders, since a negative cantal tilt makes you look tired. A study from 2007 showed that women faces with a slight positive cantal tilt were preferred in 93% of cases tried, with all other features being equal. But NCT or negative cantle tilt is not exactly a determined factor for looks. I mean, check out model and BMX rider Austin Augie or Drake or even Marilyn Monroe and Camille Bell. These people are considered very attractive and they all have NCT. Okay, the next thing to talk about is the coloring. The coloring of the eyes plays a role in dictating the eye area of people as well, but it's not as important as structure and shape when it comes to determining the level of attractiveness. My personal opinion is that no coloring is bad, but a more striking one can halo the eyes and give it a significant boost. When it comes to the science on this subject, it's almost as if what's rare and what's striking is what people see as the most attractive. For example, only 9% of people on Earth have blue eyes, but it's widely seen as the most attractive eye color in studies. Some studies have brown and green eyes as the most attractive in women, but overall blue is the color that's rated as the most attractive in both genders. Another thing that can impact the appearance of the eyes is the color of the sclera. In studies it has been shown that people with whiter rather than redder sclera are rated as 25% happier, 42% healthier and 17% more attractive. Of course this is very mar marginal as a whole and this video is sponsored by Clear Eyes. I'm just, I'm joking guys. Another interesting finding is that the limbal rings of the eye, you know, the dark circles surrounding the iris, can actually make eyes seem better looking. A study from UCLA with 45 participants showed them a set of 80 pairs of faces. The faces in each pair were identical, except for the fact that one had a darkened limbal ring, and the other had an iris of a uniform color. He found that both men and women preferred the faces with the dark limbal rings. Another bigger study did the same, but asked the participants to rate how healthy they thought the faces looked, with the darker limbal rings coming out as the healthiest looking. 
So why are the limbal rings a factor when it comes to judging health and attractiveness? Well, our limbal rings are darker when we're young and fade and blur as we age. Limbal rings may also be an indicator of the health of a person's heart and circulatory system because they are darker in those who have low levels of phospholipid accumulation, a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Well, that was it for this video. Like I said, this is only generalizing studies and every single face and every person's eyes are unique, so don't let anything in this video make you feel bad about yourself. And I'll catch you guys later. Please like, please subscribe if you enjoyed. Goodbye!